okay? We're here in uh, Wright, Kansas, right next to the big Coke nitrogen ammonia plant uh, out of Dodge City with Kevin Durler. He's a six-year uh, veteran of the Xactrix, uh, first year with strictly ammonia. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And I told Kevin, I think wheat's going to go up. I said, that, well, it's going to go to six, seven bucks, and he just laughed me out of the room. And uh, and uh, then I brought his calculator back one time. I he loaned me his calculator. I brought it back. Right, Kevin? And this is Denton, his son, just started farming. And uh, is this your first, second year, Denton? Be first. First year, and you came out of K-State, did you? Uh, Fort Hayes. Fort Hayes. Oh, so you're an agronomist then, top notch agronomist guy. I didn't go for it, but... Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, well, Kevin's done really well with uh, this uh, this old uh, fowl master from um, from Quinstar, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. wasn't it? Found it in the fence corner, and you had it, or no, it was sitting up there, at Scott City. Yeah, and then he put on some Dutch openers. He found uh, sitting around, and uh, those Dutch openers ran for five, six years, I think, didn't they? And now he's got the DMR openers on here that. Uh, Looks very impressive, 22-inch uh, diameter, uh, quarter-inch blades, and uh, lots of closing action there and sealing action. Um, fixed angle opener, and uh, one thing about Kevin, uh, he's not a, he's not slow in the tractor seat. Uh, I remember that first time you ran. <laughs> that was something else, wasn't it? Uh, those old Dutch openers where he was turning corners on Kim Fallow, and man, I tell you, that outside opener was going about 10 mile an hour. <laughs> well, we slowed down to about seven. Seven. Got it down to seven. Yeah. But it's been pretty uh, interesting. And then you switched to the, um, and added the TAPS formulator over here. And that was a big jump for you to decide to do that, wasn't it? That was a little bit of mystery in that. Yeah. Mystery and money. Mystery and money. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the yields are there. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The returns are good. Yeah. We've had good crops the last couple of years. Yeah. And under real dry, uh, stressful conditions. Yeah, it's like I was saying earlier. Some fields were we were just blown right out of water, mm -hmm. and uh, 70 bushel stubble and 20 to 50 bushel wheat. You know, yeah, so depending on the area. And this 2012 drought year—that's an amazing return for annual cropping. The black fallow guys probably didn't uh, do any better, did they? I uh, no, I don't. Think Who knows? You know? Who wants to talk about it? <laughs> It's just one of them years you chalk it up. Yeah. And uh, Kevin's grown his operation. And uh, Denton, are you the guy that runs the cedar? Uh, oh, we both do. Yeah. Uh -huh. You like the uh, 1890, do you? Yeah. Yeah, that's quite a piece of machinery. Are you putting any fertilizer down with it at all, or are you just we seeding? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We probably put some seed foss down with it when we seed this year. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the fertility program is primary to get the bands down deep, so you get deep root colonies uh, for um, establishing winter wheat and going through these droughty periods. And this tool would also be a good side dress tool to side dress wheat in the spring. Have you been doing any of that? No, we haven't, but I'm going to try. You're going to give her a go. I'm so give it a try, you know, especially and, if we graze anything. Mm -hmm. You got to be in early on side dress. That that'd be one little clue. Uh, from Dodge City here all the way down to south of Dallas, uh, we run these uh, single disc toolbars into established winter wheat, and it's been uh, very successful at uh, at Hugoton, Kansas. Uh, Kramer Seed Company, uh, Ben McClure has been side dressing all of his irrigated winter wheat, and he comes back with single disc uh, toolbar in March and gets those extra nutrients down. Uh, this year he averaged over 100 bushel average under the pivots and um, had a total of 100 pounds in, 27, no, about 40 pounds of P and uh, about 15 pounds of S. So, uh, but this, he's not changing a thing. He likes to put the nutrients down in the fall with his 1890 and then he comes back. He has wing injection on the 1890 so he can put the ammonia down and the taps alongside and then he comes back. Uh, judges the spring, looks at the weather, uh, and then he goes as quick as he can with that single disc toolbar with taps right into it. So uh, wheat seems to really respond to a double shot, especially at these economic thresholds we're at. All, all commercial fertilizer is just straight economics, the way it works. So, yeah. This is a 40-foot bar, 15-inch centers. Uh, we've got a Waymaster 
up here weighing the NH3 as he applies it, and he's got a QKT uh, TAPS formulator. And it's a single manifold system, as simple as we could uh, make it uh, in this application. Yeah. Simple's better. Simple's better, yeah. Running fast control. So um, this will be fun to come back and watch. We'll be hearing from you. You'll be uh, starting to apply on Ken Fallow here in another month or so. Oh, I'm hoping to get up and run by two weeks. In two weeks. Into Kim Fallow or established wheat? Just uh, no, like getting ready for fall planning. Yeah, fall planning. So fertilizer dealers provide a pretty good incentive for that too. Never enough. Never enough. Never. It's always way too expensive. <laughs> it's always high. <laughs>